This program is part of the Cosmic Potato Podcast Network. For more shows like this, visit our website at cosmicpotatonetwork.com. Watching television, watching television. Watching television, watching television. I need all the image, I need all the sound. I know the info right into my mind. Hey everybody, welcome back to Try by Pilot. This is the show where we judge an entire series of television and the work of hundreds on one episode. I'm Bill Lynch. And I'm Elizabeth Lynch. I still got it. <laughs> it's been a while since we recorded and that was yeah. just f- flawless. We are one also... of the best intros I've done, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. We're also, just so everyone knows, six feet apart from each other. <laughs> mm, it's, it's like three feet. About, whatever. We've been on top of each other in this condo um, for about a week yeah by the time this comes out those jokes will be very tired <laughs> <laughs> oh lol social distancing um yeah this is the first time we're recording since coronavirus and covid19 have really become a huge yeah. issue in the united states i think the last time we recorded with casey we were like oh by the time this comes out it'll be like over did we say that really we did we were like oh it probably won't even be a thing anymore and we were like oh (laughs) very mistaken yeah well that was about a month ago yeah um and yeah since then the entire country has basically gone on lockdown at least this part of the country Mm -hmm. um new jersey where we're at now has the second most cases right behind new york um and so we've been shut in with our three-year-olds for the last week and will be for the the foreseeable future yes <laughs> so it's been a week y'all and as i'm sure you all know <laughs> yeah 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 just imagine uh what your state of mind was like about three weeks ago yeah and yeah we're with you um so we are finally recording another episode have a couple beers opened to take the edge off <laughs> and yeah so we watched this really light-hearted fun show to get us uh <laughs> <laughs> to get our mind off of everything. It's called Baghdad Central. Wow. This will be... Actually, this came out on Hulu about a week ago from the time people are listening to this. It originally aired on Channel 4 over in the UK. And so I saw Hulu had picked it up. So I thought, hey, you know, I can, I can find this show online. It's, the, it's an opportunity for us to... Uh, review something and have it come out not not a month after the pilot yeah (laughs) but we're only i think about a week a week behind so let's get into baghdad central uh this takes place in uh, well at least this the beginning takes place in march 2002 in baghdad oh i had 2003 Mm. i'm probably right okay well anyway (laughs) what do you want to bet It's always tricky business betting you something. Anyway, I'll go with your answer. Come on, you're so confident in 2003. What do you want to bet? <laughs> go on. Live on the podcast. I don't want to bet anything. <laughs> I'm going to lose. <laughs> um, it is a father and his two daughters in their car, and we like see some Baghdad street life. And that night, uh, Sawson, the one girl, it's her birthday. And so everyone sings her a birthday song and she goes to blow out her candles, but there's like a long pause beforehand. And then when she blows out the candles, they go out very strangely. Did you notice that? Oh yeah, I did. (laughs) They were like, they went out and came back up like, and like, like it was like, she was blowing one direction and they went out in the opposite direction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't have any clue what the hell that could signify or if it was just like weird editing and like a bad production maybe it was thing. just like a mistake <laughs> i don't know what it could have meant I, I mean other than that you know the production value of this show was good yeah so yeah. Was, i was like what what, what was that? that it was so weird it was like a weird little glitch <laughs> like did they ha- did they have a, a window open and a breeze blew in at the wrong time um so this daughter you know was talking about like the the war coming to Baghdad and she, you know, she wishes the Americans would come to put an end to Saddam. Um, maybe they could finally bring some democracy and freedom to the country. And then we flash forward to, um, March 20th. Um, I don't, I don't know how far of a flash forward that is maybe a couple weeks. 
and we see bombs going off all along the night skyline. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, we've seen that before in other shows of this genre, but it's always just like an eerie kind of visual to see like all the explosions from mm-hmm. the bombs going off. Yeah. And we flash forward again to November and now a U.S. led coalition is controlling Iraq. And so their father gets a call. Were they calling him Baba? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Baba. yeah. We, we find out his real name later. Uh, I think that's just like It's Moussin. Dad. You know, like what they called that. Yeah. 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 Um, but some of the subtitles were not accurate. <laughs> Yeah, whatever it was that we were watching it on, I did notice that. Yeah, so I was like, are they saying Baba or Papa? I no, it's Baba. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, but his name is Musin, and he gets a call that his daughter, Sawson, has gone missing from uh, her, from his brother's house, where she was staying while she was going to university. Also, I apologize if I'm butchering these names, because I don't know how to pronounce them. No, I think, I think Sawson was okay. correct, yeah. Um, and so... Her dad goes over there, is searching through a room, and um, finds a badge from like a job that she was working as a translator, working for the U.S. coalition, which apparently is a, a dangerous thing to do, to be, to be known yeah, to be so working for them. They thought she was going to school. She apparently was not, and was working for this. She was like working for the coalition? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, translating for them. <laughs> and her name was Candy. Did you say that? I didn't. Yeah. So, oh no, another girl was Candy. I think. No, no, no. Oh, really? Uh, oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. All, all of the Susie. Her says Susie. Okay. So yeah, Sawson was Susie, and then they find later on we get to another character. Yeah. All, all of the Iraqi women that work there, they give you know Americanized yeah. names for people to call them. Um, I I did think while this dad was like going through her stuff and talking to his brother and the wife about like finding her and like interviewing people and stuff. I'm like, wow, what is this guy? A fucking detective? Like, right. And then it's revealed that he is an he ex detective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, you know, makes sense for the story too. <laughs> then we meet up with another translator who, you know, gets home to her family and we see like bruises around her neck, choke marks. And then we meet Mr. Kibbard who is ducking down in a back seat um, while uh, this guy is driving him to the woman's house who we just saw with the choke marks. Sana. Sana, yeah. Um, and it's like Sana's cousin, I think we find out, is driving him there. And they go into the house and the cousin immediately attacks this guy from behind. And, you know, yelling at him like, tell me the names of the men who attacked my cousin or I swear I'll kill you. Mm-hmm. And then immediately we, we um, see there's like all these U.S. roadblocks set up. They're all searching for this guy, Kibbert. Uh, as Musin gets to the college where his daughter was going to talk to one of her uh, daughter's professors, Rashid, um, who is not helpful at all. <laughs> right. Um, and basically just says, like, you know, women in today's Iraq have a habit of disappearing. So she doesn't give him any information yeah. whatsoever. I don't know if it's implied that she knows more or if she... I think she does. That's. The, I think she does, too. That's the impression that I got. Yeah. That she knew exactly what he was talking about, and she was basically like, shut up, I'm not talking to you about this. Right, right. The father goes back to talk to his other daughter, who was close with the daughter that went missing. With Sasson. Yes. I didn't and catch her name, did you? I, I didn't either. Okay. I was just like scanning my notes, I, I, don't, I don't see it here. Okay. Also, we watched this about a week ago, before all of the COVID stuff, like, really went down. So, it's been a whirlwind, and... This is not the most doing, fresh show in my mind. I think we're doing pretty well considering it's been a while since <laughs> yeah, we watched yeah. this. <laughs> so his other daughter says, you know, oh yeah, the last time I spoke with her, she mentioned Candy and Laura. And we, and we know at this point that Candy is Sanaa. And then soldiers barge into the house that night and say, we've acquired the three of diamonds, like as a code word, yeah. uh, talking about Musin. And they bring him to a holding center because they think he is secret Iraqi militia. And so the United States captain there requests um, some files from this British guy, Frank Temple, uh, who is training former Iraqi police and enlisting them for work with the U.S.-led coalition. 
And that's like interspersed th- these guys talking with Musin being tortured and questioned. And finally he is brought back to Frank Temple and Temple says like, Oh, you've been cleared. We, we know you're not the three of diamonds, um, but we want your help anyway. Um, we, we need men of integrity like you to help, uh, to help run this country and be the future of Iraq after Saddam's gone. We then find out that Musin's son was executed as a dissident and his wife died of cancer. So that's why it's just him and the two daughters. So he gets home and the professor is there with, um, oh, the other daughter's name is Maruj. Yes. M-R-O-U-J. Yes, that's right. I just saw that in my notes too. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might have been the first time they mentioned it, like towards the end of the show. Yeah. Then we go back to the family with Kibbert and he is out in the courtyard kind of gagged and tied up and the family is talking about how he only gave them one name like he's saying he doesn't know who attacks Sana, um, but the cousin says like you know we should kill him anyway and get rid of the body and Sanas Sanas keeps saying like no 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 it's this is my shame to bear and later on in that, that day she goes outside takes the gag out of Kibbert's mouth and like they must have been sleeping together. That, yeah. that, that's the implication. Mm-hmm. But then she pulls out a gun, shoots him in the head. And as her mom is coming outside, shoots herself in the neck and kills herself. Yeah. It was a pretty brutal scene. Oh yeah. It was, it was really, fucked it was up. really terrible. Yeah. And then the pilot ends with Musin and Maru- Maruj. Maruj. Yeah. With Musin and Maruj arriving at the, I get, I don't know if it was the U.S. Embassy. They were calling it the Republican Palace. Yeah. But it was like the base of operations for this U.S.-led coalition there. And so he was going in back in to meet with Frank Temple and I guess secretly work for the U.S. And somehow that will get tied into them helping him find his daughter, I'm guessing. Right, right. And that was the pilot to Baghdad Central. Yeah. Like we said, real light. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. What'd you think? Um I thought that it was really good. Um yeah. I I'm, like you said, it's like not super fresh in our minds now because we didn't record like right away. Yeah. But I was really interested in the story. Like I found myself like really, you know, paying really close attention and I really enjoyed it. It wasn't it wasn't like an easy subject matter. I mean, I don't remember exactly all of the stuff that they're talking about, but I assume that it's like pretty probably accurate. Um, yeah, I'm sure the story is fictionalized, but like right. the events, you know, leading up to it. Right. I thought it was good. Yeah, it's well, f- f- just on a base level, I thought it was well done. Other than yeah. that weird candle thing, you know, right. production value was good. <laughs> uh, the acting was good. Writing. It was certainly intriguing and it was certainly like visceral and really fucked up at parts. Yeah. It was intense. There were definitely some intense moments and. Yeah, definitely intense. Even when, when the soldiers come in to his apartment, mm-hmm. like thinking that he's like a secret um, militia member, right. that was intense too. Was Maruj, was she, like, sick in some way? Yes. Well, she needed a dialysis machine, I think they yeah, said. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, which, of course, I think Frank Temple used to, like, leverage Musin into working for them. Yeah. Like, oh, why don't you think about it and come back with your daughter and we'll have a dialysis machine set up for her. Like, clearly he's going to fucking yeah, go back. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, it was also interesting to see this conflict from the other side Right, exactly. I think that's like, kind of the point I was trying to make before, like that we yeah. remember it from our perspective. Right. And, you know, this was back in the early 2000s. I was an undergrad in college. Right. I don't, I didn't really pay attention. Like, like I know the broad strokes of what happened. Right, exactly. But I, I didn't pay attention to the details. I never really got into learning about it. So... To see it now from an Iraqi perspective is interesting. From no, someone who's like like our age at the time. Right, yeah. You know. Who's our age at the time. Yeah, exactly. And from the perspective of, you know, yeah, Saddam is a fucking terrible dictator. Right. So some people there did want us over there, maybe not knowing what our role was going to be or how, right. how we were going to carry things out. Right. Yeah, so it's cool to see that that dynamic too. 
Yeah, I think this is only six episodes, maybe. So I had kind of, I mean, you know, like I said, it's been the maybe the longest week of our of our lives. Right. <laughs> so I had kind of forgotten about it, and I wasn't sure if we would continue to watch. Um, but now talking about it again, I was like, oh yeah, I really did enjoy that. I was intrigued by it. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I also really enjoyed it, and I think that I would recommend it. Maybe in another time like right (laughs) now i feel like maybe it's too heavy for me to watch something like this because i want like all i want like escapism right now right and like the current climate like that's what i'm thinking um but like you don't want anything heavy because this isn't really it's not related it has nothing to do with the pandemic right um it's just not it's not light yeah. at all no it's not we already lived through that like 20 years ago bad time in history that we're yeah. going through another bad time in history it's just like right i don't know but i like it so i think that like in another like when i'm in another state of mind i would absolutely watch this and recommend it okay because i think it's good and certainly intriguing Story kept me super interested. Acting, production, all of that was great. So yeah. there's nothing wrong with this show. It's just my state of mind right now. I want to watch like <laughs> Schitt's Creek and. Oh my God, you keep bringing up Schitt's Creek. It's <laughs> so annoying. That's what do you mean? It's so annoying. Just every single night, you're like, should we just rewatch Schitt's Creek? <laughs> yes, I think we should. <laughs> uh, I mean, Schitt's Creek is great, but there's new stuff to watch. I know, but none of it's funny enough for me. <laughs> um, yeah, I also would recommend this show. I was kind of just like going to let you decide if we were going to watch it or not. So I guess I would watch it by myself, but I, there's too many other shows that I need to catch up on. Yeah. Better Call Saul started again recently, so I'm watching that. Well, we did recently start watching the second season of My Brilliant Friend. Yep. Which like... We watched on one of the hardest days since this whole, like, quarantine happened. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is not, like, a light, you know, escapism show either. Right. But there was something about it being completely, completely separate from our lives and in a different language that was very calming to me. That I was like, yeah, (sighs) Well, these I mean, people's lives are really, really hard too. Well, Baghdad Central is also completely separated from our lives and in a different langu- language. Um, but it's too real. Like it's the time pe- I lived through that time period. Sure, sure. And like my brilliant friend, like is like seems completely, almost not a fantasy, but just a different world. Yeah, I I, I get it. I get it. Um. <laughs> Are you excited for My Brilliant Friend season two? Yeah, I, re- I love that show. I yeah, think it's excellent. It's great. I could listen to, I don't know, I don't care what they're saying. I could close my eyes and just listen to that <laughs> show and be, I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> I like knowing the story and watching it, read the subtitles, but it's just so soothing. That that, <laughs> that language is beautiful. Yeah. Um, Italian, we're talking about. Italian, yes, sorry. Um, we are also, so this was, we went, we went through this plot really quick, so we got we to gotta pad this for time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we are also watching Dispatches from Elsewhere. Yeah, so what do you think? Which, which I think came out, our, our episode of it came out last week, um, and it's probably been on for like a month or five or six weeks. And we've watched now the first four episodes which this isn't this isn't a huge spoiler there's four four protagonists and the first four episodes are all revolving around one of those four you know all four of them are in each episode but it really focuses on one person per episode yeah and like you know goes into their background a little bit and talks about the character and you just follow them around <sighs> which it does progress the story you're a getting little. their perspect- perspective but not all from the same exact point. Right. You know, it is going forward. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. The time is moving forward as right. this is happening. But in terms of like the intriguing part of the story, it's not really moving it forward the way I wanted it to. Right. The show is good. The show is good. 
the show is a little bit boring. It's a little slow. I shouldn't yeah. say boring. I should say slow. Sure, slow. Yeah, I agree. But yeah. I'm still waiting for something to happen. So, like, I'm still interested in watching it. You know? I'm curious to know what Casey thinks. Obviously, Casey's quarantined some for, somewhere else Yeah, even, right now. even more so than he usually was. So, um, we can't ask him right now. But, like, I'm curious to know. Because I think either you or he was saying, like, this show could easily be, like, a big disappointment. Yeah. And I'm, I don't think that yet. I don't think it's a I big disappointment. It's not. I don't think it's a big disappointment, at least not yet. I certainly don't love it. The premise is so intriguing to me. If, if you didn't listen to that episode of ours or if you haven't watched the show and you're interested at all, you know, it's these four people of, you know, very different backgrounds and personalities who are like tied into this game, like a social experiment kind of game or so we think. Um, right. But it's these two sides kind of pitted against each other and you're trying to figure out what's really going on. Is it a game? Are these two sides, you know, in reality, like pitted against each other, trying to get this like powerful girl, Clara that everyone's searching for. Mm -hmm. And so they like build all that up so much in the first episode, but then you don't really ever find out anything else throughout yeah. the next three episodes well it's because they spent so much time in these next four like you know in the first four episodes it's like okay now meet this person now meet this person now meet that person and it's like okay like now i understand yes i understand who all of the characters are yeah but like i still don't really know fully what's going on it's just like they're spending so much time just on the characters I i'm okay not knowing what's going on fully but I want them to, like, give me some breadcrumbs, you know? Like, they... Things are happening, but it's only happening to make you continue to question, is this a game or is this real? Right. I don't feel like there's been any substantial clues or progression on that front. Right. You know? Well, even for you to be, like, in their perspective, like, in their shoes, trying to figure out what's going on or how to find Clara, like you're not given as much as they are. Do you know what I mean? Right. And <laughs> like the one clue that they found in the fourth episode was this like insanely far-fetched thing uh, that Andre 3000's character notices and then... Yeah, it was so far-fetched. Ah, oh, man. Which like, I get it. The, the story kind of, the show kind of is. But sure. it was like not really realistic at all that like he would have like seen it in his mind and then went and convinced his teammate to go back and see it in her mind to pick up the clue yeah it's it's nothing that you as the viewer would ever have a chance right. of noticing or figuring out and that is a missed opportunity i think because i don't know i watch those shows or any kind of like show with a mystery behind it i want to like try to figure it out myself and if yeah. i if i do then i feel it feels really rewarding right and now basically all we have to like figure out to be like oh i think it's real nope i think it's a game right that's yeah, all I mean, we have that's like literally all we have right now right there's no <laughs> like there's no evidence to support either of those yet like right. hard evidence you know which it just seems like it kind of just wants to be this like fun quirky I don't know, escape from reality kind of thing. And it's not really that fun. <laughs> that fun. <laughs> like, I think it wants to be something and it's just not quite there. Yeah. That, that's all. I don't know. I, I don't want to, I don't want to fully talk ourselves out of watching it. Cause no, now I'm still going to watch it. We've already watched four episodes and uh, you know, uh, it's still an intriguing premise. Right. But uh, man, I really hope they start to follow through a little bit more. I yeah. think in the next episode we meet Clara. Um, yeah. Or so, or so. So we think. So we think. Uh, but but also, like, I really like Simone's character. Yeah. I think she's I great. I love Simone's character. I mean, Sally Field's great. Her, her character is a little bit annoying. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just the writing for it. You know, she's this overexcited older woman in her 60s who repeats every single line four times. Right. Four times. That's not an exaggeration. <laughs> and then Andre 3000, I'm just not that crazy about. He's like super stereotypical, like hyper genius conspiracy theorist. 
Right. Uh, Super type A, like, like, um, but like to an unbelievable and unlikable level. Right. You know, like not in a monk way. Oh no. Monk was great. Monk's great. (laughs) Um, Ooh, let's do that pilot by the way. Ooh, monk. Yeah. And I don't really into Jason Siegel's character either. I'm just yeah, like, just like did you just want to put yourself in this show? Yeah. There's nothing interesting so. about his character. There's really not. Right. Right. I think Simone's kind of it. Yeah. It's Simone and the premise of the show. Yeah. And the premise hasn't really <laughs> paid off yeah. at, at all yet. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, it's, it's kind of, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. It could be good. Yeah. I'm hopeful. So, the other show that will come out before this one is Ragnarok, which usually we would wait until a recap episode, but I'll just say that we both finished Ragnarok. Yeah. Six episodes. And uh, Janice, who's, who was on that episode, also <laughs> finished it a long time ago. So, I don't know if we want to go into it too much or spoil too much, but obviously we finished it and we enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think... Season two was up in the air, but now I think it's been confirmed. Oh, really? I think I saw Janice post something. And maybe she even tagged me in it. Um, Like one of the actors that she follows on Twitter posted something. Yeah. Oh, I think, I think maybe she, I saw that too. Yeah. Um, Which I'm happy about because I didn't, I wasn't satisfied with the ending. If it was just a one, a one off. Oh yeah. Clearly they weren't trying to have it be one season. Yeah. Cool. All yeah. right. This episode's long enough now. <laughs> <laughs> what else can we talk about? Uh, I don't know. Want to play a game? Like what? I don't know. Like, would you rather or something? All right. Ask me a question. Does it have to be TV related? Yeah. Okay. Would you rather be quarantined in the another life ship? <laughs> Or would you rather be quarantined in the house and indebted? Oh, my gosh. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) I was so ready to say the second thing no matter what, because another life was so terrible. But so was indebted. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You got to be with all those people and all those characters are there. It's not like, oh, you just get the space. Like, oh, this is a cooler place to be in. You're stuck. You're with all of those people. I guess still indebted because the whole premise of being on the Another Life ship was they were stuck on that ship for like months or years by themselves. Yeah. So I'll choose the indebted house. What about you? Oh, I'd absolutely choose the indebted house. I (laughs) hated that ship. You know, I hate ships. Spaceships. So cold. I hate spaceships. At least I could go outside and indebted. Just a bunch of steel. I could go in their yard. I could close my bedroom door. Yeah, that's true. Okay, it was an easy decision. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right, you ask me one now. But yours was good, and it was, like, based on current events. If you... Oh, no, that's not what we're playing. Would you rather... (laughs) All right, if, if society collapses. Okay. <laughs> keep it alight. Would you rather only be able to watch CBS All Access? Or <laughs> nothing nothing I can say would make you not pick. <laughs> would you rather watch CBS? And CBS All Access. So you have both of those options. Okay. It'll really just open it up. Or the CW. Hmm. Do I have the entire catalog of like both networks? No, it's just whatever's on TV. Whatever's on TV right now. Yeah. I don't know a lot of CW stuff right now. Yeah. And you know that CBS has... Um, young Sheldon. But CBS All <laughs> All Access, as much as I hate it, has the good fight. Oh, which true. is the um, you know, follow up to the good wife, which yeah. I loved. Um and I just never watched it because it's on goddamn CBS All Access. <laughs> but CBS also has Sunday morning, which I love. 
True. Oh, wow. So I guess you're going with CBS. Well, I don't know. I I mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, what's on CW? CW has Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which is really good. Okay. I don't know if it's currently on there. But other than that, I really don't know anything else that's on it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe CBS. I think there's more. CBS is like has a lot more stuff. Even though a lot of the sure. shows are stupid. There's just like way more to choose from. Yeah, yeah, that's probably right. Current events I could get. Yeah, what's even on CW when like primetime isn't happening? <laughs> I don't know. Do they uh, maybe have news? it's like reruns of stuff. Yeah, they have they probably have like some news thing. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Wow. Fascinating. Fascinating okay, finish great, to this episode. Great stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we're going to go and watch Dispatches from Elsewhere, <laughs> even though we just said how disappointed it was, how disappointed we are well, in it. Well, now that we're not focusing on the characters, now maybe we can finally pick up and we'll go somewhere with it. Yeah. That's well, why I keep sticking it out. Yeah, same. I just think that the that their explanation of all the characters has not been super duper interesting right especially since his opening the opening to the entire series was his <laughs> saying him saying i'm going to spare you 20 minutes of like getting to know this person and i'm just going to tell you about them right but now we've spent an entire episode four episodes yeah on each person uh, yeah yeah I mean, not entirely just on that person. It's just like happens to be from that person's perspective mainly. Right, right. It's not like, but it's, it feels like it's been a little bit of a waste of time. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, on we go. All right, everybody. If you have suggestions on shows for us to watch, you can email us at trialbypilot at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Trial by Pilot. And go on to Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you're listening to this. Subscribe to the show, leave a review, and tell a friend. Uh, and thank you to the Beats for providing our theme music. Thanks, Beats. Bye. Bye.